Welcome to the print. From the Tamil Nadu government moving the Supreme Court against Governor R. N. Ravi to the West Bengal and Punjab governments witnessing growing tensions with their respective governors. Over the past few months, center appointed governors have often found themselves at crossroads with the elected state governments. And so in today's episode of Laws of the Land, we'll be talking about governors and their powers, and they'll probably discover the reasons behind why we've seen such uh, tips or growing tensions between governors and state governments. For this episode, you have me, Apoorva Mandhani. We have with us Bhadra Sinha. And we have with us Supreme Court lawyer Namit Saxena. You've seen uh, him on our show before, of course. Thank you so much for joining us again, Thank Namit. You. Thank you, Namit. Uh, so before we touch upon these three cases, which Apurva has just briefly mentioned, for our viewers, could you, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, reflect a little bit on the role of the governor? Um, how is it defined under the, under the Constitution? What are the duties, so, the so obligations? Before, before we yeah. go to the role of the governor, let us see who governor, who, who can be a governor. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, the, the constitution prescribes basic requirement to be a governor. One, 35 years of age. Mm -hmm. Second, you can't be a part of either the Lok Sabha or the Rajya Sabha. And third, you can't have, a, you can't have an office of profit. These are the three major requirements. Then uh, a governor is appointed by the president. Mm -hmm. So, there is this doctrine of pleasure. Mm -hmm. So, a governor holds office for a tenure of five years or earlier during the pleasure of the uh, president of the country. So, okay. president is the appointing authority, president is the removing authority for a governor. Now, a governor primarily has uh, three major functions, legislative, executive and judicial. Now, judicial functions are, for example, clemency, where he can, you know, sort of give a pardon or, uh, you know, uh, for example, he, uh, he also appoints high court judges mm -hmm. in high court, etc. These are the judicial set of functions that the governor does. And the governor does certain uh, I mean, executive actions, which are, for example, uh, appointment of the state election commissioner, mm -hmm. appointment of uh, the members of the state public service commissions, and he also becomes the chancellor of all the universities in the state, etc. So these are the set of executive powers which he does. Then he then the legislative powers, for example, uh, all the bills which the state legislative assemblies or in a case a state legislative council they sort of pass they have to give it to the governor for his assent, right. the governor assents to it. Second, he has the ordinance making power. Third, he has the power to declare president's rule in, you know, depending upon a set of circumstances in a particular state, he can declare president's rule in a, in a particular state as well. So these are the three broad roles of the governor. Then governor, it is also important to note that governor has immunity under article 361. A governor can't be summoned, you know, although he is the Raj Pramukh as, you know, in, a, in form of the first person of the of the state, but he can't be summoned under Article 361. But actions or inactions of governor are uh, subject to judicial review. They are not completely immune in that sense. Okay. So these are the broad perspective of the roles and who can be a governor, etc. Now, what... How, I just want to ask you, you yes. uh, gave, uh, I mean, you pointed out the uh, requirements for being a governor. So, and you said the governor is appointed by the president. Uh, just for you viewers, could you say whether it is necessary for a governor or a person who's going to become a governor to have any political affiliation. Is it necessary or is it not necessary? So, uh, the constitution does not, is sort of sub silent on it. The constitution does not say that you have to have been politically active to become a governor. You can be politically completely inactive and then also become a governor. So, uh, that that is not a requirement as such. But lately what I've seen is people who have had some sort of political inclination towards the ruling establishment. See, what happens is president also acts on the aid and advice of the council of ministers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, indirectly central government only appoints a governor right. in a sense. So, that way is having a political affiliation closer to the ruling establishment at the center sort of, you know, It's an established you. practice in a way, it's, but it's not... It's a convention. It's a convention. Of. Broadly, yes. So, but uh, there's another important role of the governor. When we discuss, uh, you know, the role of the governor to give assent to the bill. Mm -hmm. So, there's this article 200 in the constitution, mm -hmm. which is very important for our discussion today. Mm -hmm. Now, 200 says that, you know, that the governor, has, governor can do three things. Once, uh, you know, the legislative assembly passes a bill and sends it uh, to his, uh, you know, to get his assent. He can either, either give the assent or he can withdraw, uh, withheld the assent mm -hmm. or he can send it to the president that I need president's, uh, you know, uh, uh, consent or whatever president's recommendation on this. So this is what article 200 broadly says. Now, why it is important for our discussion today is because what happened in the Punjab's case. But before you go ahead to that, yes. uh, the third 
uh, uh, point which you've mentioned that you know uh, the bill can be referred to, to the president. Yes. Under what circumstances can a bill be referred to the president? So that is a pending issue actually. Okay. What has happened in Tamil Nadu's case is there were there are a set of ten bills. Hmm. So uh, the governor said that I am sending it to the president. Yeah. No, sorry, this is the Kerala's case. Okay. There were eight bills. One that the governor gave assent, and seven he said that I am sending it to the president. Now one of the major objections taken is that there there are no uh, reasons given that why are you sending it to the president so does article 200 specify anything about this no. particular po uh, no. no no article 200 see because constitution gives certain discretion mm. to constitutional authorities so as to you know manage their own affairs and a governor is a very strong constitutional authority in that sense but constitution also sort of guarantees that nothing uh, you know no action or inaction can be arbitrary in nature mm. so that is why giving a reason is important it can't be that a governor, you know, whimsically decides that I will send this bill and not this bill. So there has to be some, you know, some application of mind shown to the legislative assembly because you can't, you know, sort of ghost the legislative assembly like this because that is the elected government. You are unelected, you are selected. Governor is a selected uh, person. Mm -hmm. He's not elected. That is not the mandate of people as such. Since you mentioned discretion, if we could talk a little bit about how the governor takes dec uh, decisions. Can he take them independently on the advice of council of ministers? When can he take them independently and when does he have to act on so, the aid advice? Certain rules of the governor, he sort of acts independently. For example, clemency or pardon, etc. He acts independently. It is not necessary that he has to act, act on aid and advice of the council of ministers. Otherwise, for all these executive, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the executive part of the, you know, the powers of the governor, he has to act on aid and advice of the council of ministers. Now, when the, when the legislative assembly passes a bill and sends it to his assent, that you please give your assent, there is very less discretion there, unless there is something which is, so there are provisos in article 200. Unless it is completely unconstitutional or he says that there is a pending matter or he requires some opinion by the high court. So they are given, you know, exhaustive, uh, you know, sort of safeguards. Only in these cases you can, you know, say that I am, you know, sort of not exercising my discretion to give assent. But unless you declare, so the expression used is, and that is why the Punjab judgment is very important. They said that you have to declare. Because in Punjab's case, the government did not, did not even declare that I am withholding my assent. Right. So they right. said that you have to declare either way. Mm -hmm. hmm. And you have only these three options. So the three options which you say under Article 200 is that either the governor gives his or her assent. Hmm. Second is withhold. Withhold. Right. Third is referring to the, to the president. To the president. Uh, now, um, I mean, before touching upon the Punjab uh, judgment in which certain uh, points of law were clarified, could you just explain these disputes that have arisen between, uh, you know, these opposition rule states and their respective governor. So, uh, broadly, why these disputes have come is because, for example, we have Telangana, we have Tamil Nadu, we have Kerala and we have Punjab. Yeah. Now, if you'll see the ruling establishment at the center and the ruling establishment at the state level, they are different and they are politically each other's opponents also. Mm. Now, when we see the governors who are there, you know, see at the end of the day, these governors are also, you know, human beings. They have their own set of political inclinations, they have their own set of orientations, etc. So these governors, you know, have been, as we discussed, appointed by the center, the ruling establishment at the center, in a sense. So there is some sense of disagreement in whatever happens or whatever the state governments are trying to do or trying to enact, mm -hmm. in a sense. So, but the governor is not supposed to be a super legislative assembly. Mm -hmm. So governor is not a legislative assembly above that legislative assembly, which is elected. Mm -hmm. So, although governor can have his own set of political differences, but the constitutional mandate is that there should not be a pause in lawmaking. Right. A governor is not supposed to be, you know, putting a full stop on whatever the lawmaking agencies are doing. So, there are differences because of political differences perhaps, or perhaps because of a impasse between the governor, or perhaps lack of communication, or perhaps there can be multiple reasons. But in different different cases for example what is happening in what happened in punjab is they the governor said that i passed 185 bills yeah, yeah. but only these i have you know sort of withheld my consent although he did not declare that also so he said that it can't be you know said that i am you know sort of uh, putting the law making to a pause etc but the supreme court said no 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 you can't you are a symbolic head 
you can't sort of assume you know self assume a responsibility of being a super legislative assembly and say ki no no ni i'll i'll not be so basically in these cases the governor has not the governors of the respective states have not taken any decisions yes right in the sense they are just sitting over the bills no depends for example in tamil nadu we actually sent it to the president yeah so it depends it the different different so tamil nadu kerala are actually pending before the supreme court right now punjab the supreme court has already decided and punjab supreme court actually decided twice Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll I'll tell you how they decided it twice, and the governor, in my view, see because governor is also a constitutional authority. Supreme Court is also a product of the constitution, right. so one organ of the constitution should not be forced to pass a writ right. against another organ of the constitution to tell him or remind him about his constitutional duties. The governor ought to have learned from the first order itself, right. way back in February twenty twenty three, that you know that you are constitutionally expected not to do this. but then the supreme court had to pass another writ so coming specifically to punjab's case yes um uh, as you pointed out the court has given two orders in the punjab case yes. right uh first if you could just touch upon the issue that arose in the punjab case because i think there was an issue with regard to the fact that the assembly session yes. which was uh, held the governor did not approve of that and that is why he kept uh, yes. sitting on the bills and then what exactly the supreme court has said uh about the governor's power when it comes to withholding assent yes so i'll i'll give you a chronological yeah. list thing so 21st october 23 uh, 21st february 21st february 23 the punjab government wrote to the governor that we have to hold a special uh, we have to you know convene the vidhan sabha the, the legislative assembly on 3rd of march please you know uh, convene it the governor said no i will not do it and he sort of rejected that plea the punjab government came to the supreme court filing a writ against the governor saying that the governor has said that he is not going to do it these are important bills and we have to sort of convene the legislative assembly on 3rd of march so please you know pass appropriate writ on 28th february the supreme court passed an order mm-hmm. saying that this action of governor because the reason given by the governor was that i am taking legal advice uh, so the supreme court said there is no question of taking a legal advice like this what is this legal advice so you know and they sort of allowed you know to convene that uh, legislative assembly on 3rd of march so they convened legislative assembly on 3rd of march after 3rd of march on 20th it continued for some time on 22nd of march the speaker adjourned it signed it mm-hmm. then the speaker later on reconvened the session on 19th june and 20th june 2023 and on 19th and 20th they passed a set of four bills mm-hmm. and sent it to the governor for his assent the governor never gave his assent the governor never also declared that i am going to withheld my consent my assent there was no communication there was no assent. communication mm-hmm. on on these bills now in somewhere in july the government the punjab government they sent request see for because of money bills for money bills the governor has to convene okay under article 207 the assembly, the assembly session so they sort of sent uh, a request to the governor that please sort of convene for these three money bills which for which we need uh, your consent the governor in response to that said that because you convened two sessions on 19th and 20th june yeah. and you passed four bills i have taken legal advice from a constitutional expert that they were illegal so i'm not going to give you any more assent any more assent for I'll, for convening the for assembly for convening these money bills hmm. now two and four communication happened this went up till october and in the meanwhile he's sitting on those four bills those four bills he's side completely you know silent on them ha- completely silent happily sitting on it no nothing about them because he's saying that those sessions in which you pass those bills are illegal so um, so there is no question of giving my assent to those bills yeah, yeah. this is what he's primarily saying now this this session for money bills they want to have it on 19th of october so the communication to and fro happened till 12th of october also 12th 15th october also 19th october they sort of uh, they had to pass this now they again came to supreme court and filed an article 32 petition saying that you know that please interfere now the supreme court although initially said ki you know ki ji let's see ki in case the governor does it but the governor of course did not do it so the supreme court said ki okay we are a uh, law interpreting agency we are not going to shy away from our responsibility and they passed the judgment mm-hmm. now in that judgment they sort of reprimanded uh, the governor in without even mincing words if i may say so mm-hmm. now they dealt with two issues in the punjab judgment that the second judgment now they said under article 200 you can either withheld or give assent or you know send it to the president but whatever you do you have to declare okay 
you can't skip you mum can't about skip it. You can't skip the declaration. Yeah. The right. declaration is a constitutional mandate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And governor is supposed to be a symbolic head. So that is your role. You are a symbolic head. You as a symbol, uh, you know, you have been posted there. So you can't, you know, say that I will not do anything. I will not declare that also. So they said that due to lack of declaration itself, this is gone. This is wrong. Then they said that in case you have to send it to the president also, the expression used is as soon as. So they said that there is a mandate of constitutional expedition. So you have to, you know, move quickly. Otherwise, you know, bills may become stale. and you know the very purpose for which those bills are being passed may get exhausted or whatever the reason is hmm. or if for example there was a universities bill now if the session gets crossed so it creates a lot of problem for a lot of students hmm. so they said ki you know ki this is wrong second you know one of the arguments raised by the governor was that uh, that you know because the speaker you know sort of uh, adjourned at china day they said that the assembly has been prorogued mm-hmm. so they said there is a difference between adjournment and prorogation They said for prorogation, the assembly will have to be dissolved. That is under Article One Seventy Four, six months, etc., so on and so forth. But this adjournment will not take away the right of the speaker because he is the guardian of the house mm-hmm. to reconvene the session. Mm-hmm. So they said on both counts, the governor is wrong, and they said you know the governor will have to give his assent. Mm-hmm. Now recently, what has happened is in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. No, because that was the same bench. This is. Uh, uh, but didn't the Punjab uh, didn't the Punjab judgment also speak about? Uh, the fact that if you're withholding the assent, yes, then you have to send the bills back to the legislative assembly. I think that wasn't that no, point of no. So that, that that is an issue in Tamil Nadu. Is right. Tamil Nadu, the issue is once you have withheld your assent, right. and the assembly is reconvened, yeah. and the assembly, the elected assembly, again passes those same bills or reenacts those same bills and sends it to you, you have no option. Oh, okay. You have to give your assent. There is no question of a re-enacted bill hmm. being, you know, uh, withholding your consent on a re-enacted bill. There is okay. no question of okay. that. Huh? On a re-enacted bill. Yes. Yeah, right. So they have said they rather, you know, said that the governor should read up Punjab judgment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so which means want. that after withholding consent, the yes. once the bills are sent back uh, to no. the. No. So uh, if you have withheld your consent. Yeah. You know, and declared it. Right. Declared it. And yeah. declared it. Then the bills go back. Huh. in case you don't declare like what happened in punjab then the assembly is in a, you know sort of a vacuum yeah, the because assembly they don't vote again yeah. and send yes. it back hmm. so that is why i said minced in no in, words in, no. <laughs> and once the legislative assembly clears the bill uh, all over again in the same format yes without amending it without amending it then whether the governor can continue to sit on it no. or send it for the uh, for presidential reference that matter is still that question that, of that, law that is pending but he there is no doubt on this that he can't withhold his assent hmm. he has to either give his assent or if he has, if he has reasons to send it to the president right. then send it to the president but that also he has to do as soon as Right. You know, after the right. Punjab judgment, he can't just. So the entire purpose is this: that the governor should not sit on whatever the legislative assemblies are doing. Take an action. You have to decide either way, with your, of course, justification. No, no discretion. Every discretion is to be judiciously exercised. No discretion is unfettered. Even the governor's. Okay. And okay. and uh, an arbitrary action or inaction. They're both re- they're both amenable to judicial review. Yeah. So another question which is which just comes into my mind is so mm. if the uh, governor decides to send a bill for presidential reference, say mm. in the case of Tamil Nadu, mm. uh, where you know the legislative assembly passed the bill mm. in 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 the, in the same format. So and if the presidential reference has some reasons, so mm. can that reference actually be challenged in the court of law? Yes. Okay. even those uh, that is also not uh, you know immune to judicial review because that action can also be arbitrary for example if the governor you know gives flimsy grounds mm-hmm. or grounds which are you know you know uh, he he just deems it fit to send it to them uh, to the to the president mm-hmm. so that can be challenged mm-hmm. that is also not uh, immune to judicial review okay and you know in the in, in the tamil nadu hearing the uh, the bench made a very interesting observation mm-hmm. uh that the president uh, of india is actually elected you know through an election ah. process whereas the governor no, isn't not, yeah. so and the fact that governor if the governor gets this kind of or starts exercising these powers arbitrarily then it would actually as you mentioned stall the bills or stall the entire bill making uh, you know legislative process which is not the mandate of any constitutional functionary mm. you can't uh, you know sit on the bills like this most of a governor 
you know, a very high responsibility is there on the shoulders of a governor. He is not supposed to sit on the bills like this. Right. So, only because of political differences, more so, and this is happening, and why this is important is because this is happening, and Mr. Dave cited this in Telangana's case, mm -hmm. that in Gujarat it gets, you know, done in one month. Yeah. In other states where the ruling establishment is the same as the center and the state, you know, they get passed in seven days, three days, ten days. They gave a sort of a chart also. Mm -hmm. And only where there is a political difference, mm -hmm. there, you know, these bills are getting stalled. So, this is something which also, since the Supreme Court cannot be, you know, sort of uh, immune to ground realities. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court as the highest court of the country has to remain conscious of these facts also, without even saying them. Mm -hmm. They have to remain conscious of these facts. So, the Supreme Court has already, that, that is what they are saying, you read the Punjab judgment. Even then, you know, this is the generosity of the court, I would say. Even then they said, ki, if there is a impasse between the chief minister or one of the ministers who is tabling that bill and the governor, they should sit and decide it. Right. We will not shy away from our responsibility of, you know, interpreting the law or declaring the law. But it, it, it is advisable that you sit, to, sit together and do it. Otherwise, we will do it. So, do you think that the Punjab judgment is an exhaustive judgment uh, dealing with yes. the role and powers of the governor yes, or do you think anything more needs to be pronounced by the court? No, Tamil Nadu will have to have some, you know, this thing because they said that you can, they sort of permitted them to amend their petition also yeah. to give it a broader, uh, you know, conspectus. But uh, I think Punjab judgment because it lays down all, whatever happened in Shamsir Singh, Yesar, Bomai, etc. They have all tabled it down and then reached a conclusion that this is a settled law. We are just, you know, sort of expanding or, uh, you know, giving a fresh uh, interpretation for your sake to Article 200. Otherwise, this is all settled. It's a settled. Since yes. you mentioned the role of the governor and began with it, and now you're talking about how we've often seen these rifts, especially between uh, governor, center appointed governors and um, state governments, which may not, which may be differing from the gov government at the center. Mm. Do you think the role of the governor itself, it does it bring that into question? Does that need a relook? Because that's an argument that's often yeah, brought about generally. It, it deserves a relook where there is uh, political opposition. <laughs> Otherwise, to, uh, everywhere else it is going fine. Mm -hmm. Only where there is political opposition. And see, because it sets a very bad trend. Today, there is a certain ruling establishment at the center. Mm -hmm. And this is a democracy, right? You know, you never know. And it's, it's a constant process. Democracy is the biggest festival in the country also. So, you never know. So, this can haunt back to the ruling establishments. Yeah, yeah. And once it, the judiciary does not, you know, correct the path, you know, it is going to sort of, you know, uh, create a ripple effect. Right. Because tomorrow when the ruling establishments will change, they will have some sort of vengeance against each other, they will become vindictive. Mm -hmm. And who is at loss? The public or the country is at loss. Mm -hmm. People who actually want those laws to be framed by the legislative assembly, they are at loss. They are sitting uh, you know, and waiting. And they are, you know, <laughs> like a circus, the governor is not passing, the legislative assembly has to reconvene, reenact at whose cost? Right. Who pays for that? Mm. Public only pays for that. Right. So, this has a larger ripple effect. That is where the Supreme Court is also conscious of the fact and that is where they are taking these matters very seriously also. Mm. These two matters were very seriously, very recently also listed. Mm. Okay. With that, we've reached the end of this episode. In this episode, we spoke about the role of the governor, their duties, and we also spoke about why the rift between center-appointed governors and elected state governments has reached the Supreme Court. But as Anamit said, at the end of it all, there's a ripple effect which uh, affects the people of this country. While the Supreme Court is uh, right now trying to fine-tune uh, these uh, uh, the role of the governor and figure out a middle path between this rift. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching.